you know you've made it because you can sometimes probably everybody, no matter what they've achieved, can still question, did I, you know, did I really get there? You have a rest area named after you on the Garden State Parkway. <laughs> now that to me That's fantastic. I'm with you. We arrested the suspect at the John Bon Jovi rest area. <laughs> I stand on the side of the road. I welcome people in to go and I direct them to the men's room, the ladies' room. You no, know, you should be there to give people sh shoulder massages. I hand massages. them t t t towels when they're washing their hands. You, you didn't wash your hands. Come back here. Yeah. <laughs> I also didn't realize that you guys played uh, in the, in, in, I think it was 89, you played in the Soviet Union. We did. Which is absolutely unbelievable to me. Before yeah. the wall came down, yeah. you guys were there. We were. Uh, and I Lit would the torch at, at Lenin Stadium. Yeah, I would imagine, <clears throat> I mean, this is at a time when rock bands were not allowed to go into the Soviet Union. And I would bet that would be a very appreciative audience. They were. Um, now you gotta remember the Soviet Union if you even thought of having an album as we knew it, you would be imprisoned. There was kids that had lists on a piece of paper that were very small because if the KGB came up at that time, they would crumple and need it. Right. You know, so there was more security on the catering backstage than there was on any band's dressing room because they were like, if they see the Hard Rock Cafe's cheeseburgers and french fries, there will be a fucking riot. Yeah. And, and and meanwhile, we're playing at this, you know, festival um with these other bands and nobody gave a shit about that, you know, because the security was truly, a, you know, crying when they saw the kinds of food. So we went to the Soviet Union, yeah. And it was a part of a a, a deal that my first manager who was arrested for smuggling a lot of drugs and to you know, whatever. We've all done it. So <laughs> to keep him out of jail, I had to go to the Soviet Union, but um, it was a, that's another story. Wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> you can't just toss that off. So he was in a lot of trouble. And if you went to the Soviet Union, he would not be in crazy. Trouble. I don't know how he did this, but my first manager um, got into some trouble with the law, honest mm -hmm. to God, for he was accused of smuggling, I don't know, some incredible amount of tons of marijuana into America. If you're going to do something, go all out. Like I'm There's talking like hundreds of, like a lot of dope. And somehow his plea bargain was to take, you know, the young cute kid and throw him to the wolves and the judge. And then he says, and I've got an idea. We'll go to the Soviet Union and promote you know, peace and harmony and blah, blah, blah. And please, your honor, don't put me in prison. And so I had to go in the snow to the Soviet <laughs> Union <laughs> and say, we're coming. Yeah. And, and he put a package together with some of his acts and some of his friends and, and we went and played. It was a crazy story. He never went to prison. Right. It's a good, happy ending. Yeah. <laughs> He, Good went happy on, he went on to move a lot more drugs. Right. <laughs> Crazy story, but true story. So it's been 40 years, yeah. 15 studio albums. Is that right? Yeah, at least, yeah. Uh, Something like that. Yeah. And like I say, the thing that I related to the most is, because I'm right there with you, some more vintages, I'm always trying to find something I'm passionate about. And if I can find that, and I can find something that interests me, that's good enough. You know what I mean? Like that, and that's, you have to really work at it. You have to keep trying. Uh, and it's, it was, the, the, I, I took a lot of inspiration from your, from your documentary. Cause I thought well, this is a, this is a guy who has put in the work over and over and over again. Well, thanks. And yet you know, somehow it's, it's good. And I don't mind it. Yeah. It, 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 I could have been very, I don't know about you, but I could have been very comfortable and I mean this, working at the auto body shop or my father was a hairdresser, my mother had a little retail shop. I was very, very comfortable, confident in who, you know, who I was and what my life could be. But I loved this thing, which was you know, singing in a rock band. And, and it, I'm the only one in my family that ever did it. It wasn't like we had a musical household, but that was my love. It wasn't I was drawn to it for celebrity. It was just, I just needed it in the morning. Yeah. So otherwise I really could have been happy. It's 
it it's not driven by anything other than the sheer love of it. When I meet young people, and especially in this age of uh, the cell phones and the, the Instagram and influencers, and I meet people and they tell me they're interested in doing something. I say, well, what is it? And when they tell me that their interest is just is being famous, when yeah, that's yeah, the yeah, first yeah, thing yeah. they mention, I think, I don't know what that is because that's a clear broth. There's no nutrients in that. Nothing. That's people in a restaurant looking up seeing you and then looking back down at their food um, for a second, you have to love the thing that you're doing and that has to drive it. I'm sure they love that thing that they're doing, but what exactly is it, you know? I, I, I'd like to, to think that what we're trying to do is leave something behind, mm -hmm. you know? All the people that you made smile over the years is leaving something behind. You impacted all those people for generations now. Mm -hmm. You know, Conan, you made people laugh. Yeah, and that's a gift that you gave back. It, looking hot in an Instagram picture is pretty shallow. You know, I used to be. I'd like to have both. But I would love to have both. <laughs> I'd like to look so hot in both. an Instagram photo. It just doesn't look. Yeah, it's just doesn't, this doesn't Irish fine. face is collapsing in on itself. <laughs> but I, but but I know what you mean is uh, you leave. Um, uh, I've had your uh, very this very generous guy he plays a lot of benefits. I think I've been at maybe ten different benefits over the years where you've shown up and played. And when you're playing uh, your music, just d watching people jump up on their feet and sing along. Oh, and one of the nice. coolest things I ever saw is I was standing near your wife, Dorothy, and um, I think um, she start you started to play one of your you know many hits and she jumped up and started singing along. And I thought, my wife doesn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> my wife's like, whatever. You think he's funny? All right. But I just, but, but I love that, you know, you, you guys have been together forever, that yeah. she's, she seems like your biggest fan, which I thought was very cool. Well, she's my most honest fan. You know, she'll tell you when it sucks. Um, you know, it absolutely tells me when it's not good. So that's the best thing is, look, we've been together since high school, for God's sake, you know? Yeah, that's amazing. It's, it's, it's a good thing. Um, but she's, she's no bullshit. She's, she doesn't do the Insta either, so she don't care about that. Yeah. You know, it's, it's better to, to leave that all out there and on the stage. It's, it's not what we bring home. Now, I have to bring this up because I'm a very enthusiastic wine drinker. Yeah. And I know that you have a... You, you started uh, a, a wine business and you, you've come out with this rosé. And I'm bringing this up because apparently this thing is huge. This rosé is huge. It's called Hampton Water. Hampton Water is really big. Um, it's, it's really my son's company. I get to be Santa Claus. I come in for the photo op. <laughs> you know? And the tastings. Everyone wants to sit on my lap and take a picture. <laughs> and, and then HR comes in. <laughs> you know? And by the way, thanks for letting me yeah, do that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I hope you he enjoyed had security as much as take I did. Me, yeah, he... <laughs> <laughs> you weren't supposed to grind on my lap when you sat down with a picture. It's when I started bouncing that you got upset. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I, uh, it's funny because um, this is a true story. Like, you know, different, uh, sometimes different singers or actors are associated with like a really yeah. cool liquor. Right. And I remember a couple of years ago, my manager was like, you got to get in on this. And I said, no one's going to buy a tequila or a whiskey because it's associated with Conan O'Brien. And he was like, well, we got to think of something. And I went, we don't really have to think of something. I'm fine. And he's like, you're not thinking straight, Clooney. And he starts yelling about all the people who've made all right. this money. Probably shouted your name too. I'm telling you, you know, John Bon Jovi's killing it. You got to do something. And I, I, I got, and then he called me up later and he was like, Hair pomade. <laughs> now, wait a minute. And I was like, wait a minute. So you're the businessman here. Do you want to go in? Yeah. Because <laughs> you've got you iconic. You and I have a history You have the iconic hair. hair. In the, yeah. Yeah. And, I have, you know, hair that's, it's a punchline, but it's gotten me through. <laughs> um, and so I think, you know, let me yeah, know. There's an opportunity. There's a, I think people would get the Conan pomade. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. I like the idea. Yeah. Yeah. You oh, can the see the wheels turning right now. I'm there. <laughs> You're going to call me later tonight, aren't you? Yep. And tell me it's a really stupid idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Well, I want to make sure I get the word out here. Cool. Uh, uh, check out Bon Jovi's new single, Legendary, yeah. as well as the four-part docuseries, 
Thank you. Good night. The Bon Jovi story, which I recommend because thank you. Uh, it's a it's really a terrific document uh, and also just kind of to me a how to of well yes you you get the luck you get I mean you clearly were born with all these gifts but then you made sure you made absolutely sure that uh, that success had every opportunity to happen just through <laughs> working your ass off. Now, thanks, brother. I appreciate it, and thank you for all the years of friendship. It, it's been great to see you and your audience today, but- I don't know who these people are.